morning, millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast. Happy Monday. Happy first day back from maternity leave. Hey, Claude, how are you doing? Nobody fucking cares. How are you? (laughs) I'm really good. I'm so happy to be back. This morning was pure chaos, like trying to make this happen. Of course. But, you know, the plan, I'll tell you how my morning went, but like so far, everything's on track. Harry just fed at the breast. And so I have as much time as I'm going to have. Who knows how much time that could be. There will probably be a lot of pauses throughout if he's crying or something. But I'm just hoping that everything goes as smoothly as it has been going this morning. I woke up and I pumped while I did my makeup. Then he woke up and I fed him and now we're toasting. And so I'm just hoping for a great show which I feel like it's gonna be because I miss you guys so much you're such a mom I fed him at the breast fed him at the breast yeah well this man is so hungry yeah and I'm exclusively breastfeeding and we I, are living I know drop where- to drop <laughs> drop every drop counts I have a feeling I know where he gets that hunger from it's definitely our side of the family um and I feel for him I know what that's like and it's it's he's got a long life ahead of him you know <laughs> Yeah, and I would love to be in studio, but I just can't leave the house for that long due to the need to feed. And I am pumping multiple times a day, but he eats everything that I pump that day. And I'm using the haka, and he eats the haka that day, too. I don't have one drop for stash, and I've been pumping two to three times a day. So hopefully we'll get to that place, but right now I am chained to the home. I just want – you're chained to the rhythm. I just want to say – so – Unfortunately, I was not allowed in the hospital room, which is upsetting, of course. But of course, Mm -hmm. you know, your body, your choice. But since then, I do feel as though I've gotten to see new parts of you, literally. I mean, the way you just whip them titties out, girl, is just stunning. The way you're just always, like, draining those nipples. I've just really been able to see a very nude side of you. And I'm really excited about it because I'm your sister. But I feel like you don't really let me see you naked. No, I'm not a naked type of person. And I always would have thought that, like, I mean, my preconceived notions of breastfeeding are all out the window yeah and I could do a whole episode on breastfeeding at this point because it has been a journey and I had no idea that it was so physically emotionally mentally taxing I'm in like a decent place right now I think my nips do hurt but it's been it's been a wild ride but I always thought I would be someone when I breastfed that I'm like, you know what, I'll be in private. Like, I don't, I have no issue with people breastfeeding in public, but I, I'm not even, like, nude in front of my sisters. So, you like, know. why am I going to whip my tit out? Yeah. But now it's like, this man needs to eat, bring out the breast. No, 100%. And now do you understand, like, people who, um, like, okay, so the first time I ever got in trouble on the internet – the first of many, was like years ago when I tweeted like, there's a woman breastfeeding in the doctor's office, like getting private. Like I was like, and the breastfeeding community descended upon me as they should, as they should. Do you now understand the sensitivities from the breastfeeding community? I understand the sensitivities, but I'll never understand descending upon someone who just like is saying something that is different from what you think. But I also, like, don't – you have no idea. When you wrote that, like, you don't know a shit about breastfeeding. So it's like – Jackie, I was literally 14. Like, I shouldn't have even cared what you thought. I saw a breast and I was like, booby. (laughs) (laughs) No, I would have thought the same. But now, like, to me, a boob is not a private part. It's not even like a, you know – a thing other than like a, it's a fork and a knife it's a meal yeah 100 <laughs> percent. it's a plate it's a dish that's all it is and you know what this isn't my plate <laughs> this is harry's plate yeah so harry's so in, getting them titties good in case you missed it um or if you're not on patreon or you're not on instagram i gave birth on february 13th which was crazy because it was literally i went into labor saturday night well, it was Sunday morning because it was 1.30 a.m., but I hadn't fallen asleep yet. So it was really like Saturday night for me. And our last show was the day before. And it really couldn't have worked out any better. No, you podcasted until one day before you gave birth. And you're back on the podcast a month after. And if you're not setting real unrealistic expectations for women, then I don't know who is. No, I just want you to know like this, this is a facade because – Everything yeah. else going on here is chaos. Like, I don't even think Harry recognized me today because he's like, who's this woman, like, looking so glamorous when all I've seen around the house is a hot mess? Yeah, like, who's this glamazon and where's my wench? <laughs> where's my cow? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, so, so you like, guys are I looking for I Jackie's want... full birth story. It's up on the Patreon. We're not going to get into all of that today because we already did about like a 40 minute episode on the Patreon. Like um, how it all happened. Contractions, water breaking, what I felt, what was the worst part, what was the best part. Like it's all there for you. But just to um, clear the air, because there were some rumors, you did not have an at-home water birth. I read that about you, that you did. I read that you facilitated that you were my doula, but it's just crazy how rumors start. And you know what's crazy about that rumor is that I heard that I started it. <laughs> you wish. Your dream. I would do anything to be your doula. You you say that, but you're actually, like, so chicken shit, you know? Like, yeah, no, no, no. Like, I could never. You can't experience pain I don't even think you can be like around pain you don't like look at gory stuff and no. I just don't know that you are the type of personality that's needed in the birthing room honestly yeah no I feel like when I give birth like I don't even want to be in the room <laughs> no uh, and I said this on the Patreon but when I was going through labor like all I, w- I mean I was thinking about a lot of things but one thing I was thinking about was what parts of it Claudia will be able to handle and what parts like she's gonna have to find a way to skip over no and I think that most of it sounds like something I need to skip no I, yeah I know no I definitely um definitely concerned about that for sure yeah so check all of that out on the patreon and other than that it's been just like a crazy it really feels like a month but it also went by so quickly but every week I mean every day is so different people are always like how are you doing I never know how to answer I'm like good how are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, when I was, I've done like five shows since you've been on maternity leave. And every single time um, <laughs> people come to me and greet, they're like, how's Jackie? How's baby Harry? I'm like, you know, she's doing good, like the usual. She's exhausted, but like she's so happy. That's always what I say. Yeah, and that's really how I feel in like different times of the day. Like when we have a successful feeding, you know, he falls asleep like at the boob and it's just like seamless. And then like we're just sleeping together. Like those are beautiful moments. Other times I feed him for 40 minutes and he's still hungry afterwards and crying. Mm. So it comes in waves, but it's, it has been a beautiful experience. And I think it's what I expected, except definitely not the breastfeeding part. Like that has been more challenging, way, way different than I expected. Yeah. I didn't know that there were so many challenges that came along with it. And that even if like you could breastfeed and everything is like working, that it's still, you know, a challenge. And, and then the challenge arises every two to three hours. So it's like, even if your nips are raw, like you got to get back in the game. No, and really the only kind of firsthand experience we have with breastfeeding is Olivia. And Olivia was like a killer breastfeeder, couldn't make enough milk, freezer full of milk. Kayla literally is still breastfeeding and she's like 100 (laughs) years old. Like, no, she's not still breastfeeding. That was a joke. But like Olivia had a really, you know, knock wood, easy go of it with the breastfeeding. Yeah, like there was always a bottle for Kayla when she wanted a snack. No, their freezer was literally like a farm. I don't know when the farm freezer starts. I'm so excited. So many times I'm like, you know what? I'll start thinking about like putting this in the freezer. But it's like this man needs every drop. Yeah. So we're giving it to him. But it's just it's a wild ride. And and I really I don't want to set an unrealistic standard because like you've been here. You've seen it's not been glamorous. No, not at all. Not at all. But I want to put my best foot forward with the toasters. And I'm just excited to to enter Toastlandia for an hour and a half. I you know, know. It's truly an escape, especially because we have so much to catch up on. I mean, we're going to do a fast five. It's not going to be the fast five of like what happened yesterday. It's going to be <laughs> the fast five of like the big shit that's been going on. I have been doing episodes on Patreon. So if you're looking for like really in-depth analyses of like Kanye's Instagram posts, that's all available on the Patreon. Today's going to be more at a glance, which we love to do here. Um, and do. I meant to ask you, Jackie, have you seen last night's episode of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? I did. So oh. I am officially all caught up on television, except I have omitted Real Housewives of Orange County because I only have so many hours of free time in my life right now, and it just can't be spent watching things that don't spark joy. But for the first few weeks of breastfeeding, like I wasn't watching TV while I breastfed because I really needed to like focus on the latch mm-hmm. and everything that was going on, everything's so precarious. But this week, I've been like in a better place, so I'm able to like watch TV while I feed, and I've been able to catch up on like literally everything. And like last night, I woke up how many times before I like three I had three feedings like in the night so that's when I watched Salt Lake City it was actually perfect oh that's great okay well I am obviously all caught up on television too because I have no children and I'm free as a bird um and even I have not caught up on Real Housewives of Orange County I really have and I have given up on it yeah I, some things have to go but everything else I mean what else is on New Jersey mm-hmm. Salt Lake City Summer Summer House, House I'm working on Gilded Age. Like, I am, I'm there. Also, I just want to give a shout out because 
I want to give a shout out to podcasts. I yeah. obviously like, you know, have a special place in my heart for podcasting. Like it is my occupation of choice. But like there is no better partner for breastfeeding medium than, medium than podcasts because you really like tv's not great because you want to be able to focus on the latch and like you wind up being able to focus on neither but with a podcast like it goes by so quickly it's so funny and I'm actually so excited for you to be doing the toast without me so many days a week because I will be able to enjoy the toast while I breastfeed so if any of you are listening right now while breastfeeding like you got this like it's it's gonna be great baby's loving what you're making compliments to the chef compliments to the chef <laughs> and speaking of co-hosts yes this week we've got a great lineup if you want to check out who's on this week um check out our instagram we're gonna go moving forward at the cadence of jackie joining once a week if you want to do more let me know but i have filled most of the next coming weeks with some sickening people and i don't want to give any clues because i want actually i am going to give one clue for one particular person because i'm unbelievably unbelievably excited for this person but just know we have like weeks of amazing co-hosts including one person who does not like beachy waves and that's all i'll say but you think the girls in France are doing beachy waves? That's all I, that's all I want to say. Okay, I think I know who that is, and I'm so excited. It's going to be unhinged. Like, you guys have no clue. Like, so not, we're going to try and start off every week with a Monday with Jackie, but depending on the co-host schedules and also Jackie's just, like, frame of mind, yeah. we're just chuck and jive. There will be five episodes except for when I'm on tour. Um, speaking of, I added a second show in Houston because the first one sold out in 35 seconds. So head over to girlwithnojob.com slash tour for your tickets. And, of course, we haven't even been on the air. Sorry to, like, make now about myself. No, but, like, I was about to ask minutes. you. I was about to ask you. How was your maternity leave? You know what? It was so fucking busy. It flew by also. I was gone for like three out of four of the weeks. But the first week that we were on maternity leave where you were like actually having a child and I was actually doing nothing was so glorious. Like I just maternity leave without the child is really something more people should do. (laughs) I agree. But also give yourself credit. You were doing the Lord's work. You were watching Bryce. Oh, I was. And everybody wants to know how that went. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Like, I was really, um, like, not into the idea. Even though it was my idea, the second I offered it, I was like, why did I do that? Like, I just, I saw vacation Bryce. We all went away for the holidays, and Bryce was on vacation, and he was not acting like a good dog should. So I was like, oh, my, what have I just invited into my home? And I was kind of dreading it, like, the entire time leading up to him being scooped up at my house. I do want to, I just say that. Um, And it was the most glorious, what was it, like eight or 10 days? Yeah, it was Sunday night or Monday to to the following Thursday. Yeah, exactly. It was incredible. Like the love I have in my heart for Bryce is unmatched. He's such a good angel boy. He loves his mommy and his auntie. And we like... It was just an energy match. Like, he, he and I were kindred spirits. Theo, I think, towards the end was like, can we get this stranger out of our home? But I loved it. And, like, when it was time for Zach to come pick up Bruno, because I was going to Florida for tour, um, I was, like, low-key, like, depressed. Like, I was so sad. Bryce will do that to you. And I know you didn't have faith in Bryce, but I knew that Bryce had faith in himself and he was going to show you and I knew it was going to be a magical time for you. I actually didn't expect it to go as amazingly as it did. I figured he would like take some time to adjust, but no, he fit right in. He had the most amazing time. And honestly, when he came home, like I missed him so much. When he came home, he had no time for me. Mm. We needed like one or two days to reconnect while also like there is this new person in the house and he's trying to like adjust mentally his place now he has settled into the big brother role he's so curious about like you know and every once in a while he's like sniffing around especially when we're breastfeeding Mm -hmm. but then he like settles right next to us and it's so beautiful and he's just really become a responsible loving big brother and he's also like really territorial of me like if harry's ever like sleeping and so i'm alone like he wants to be curled up like a little baby fed with a bottle and put into the crib and swaddled does he try and get at the breast yeah. Oh, yeah. He's so interested in what's going on there. <laughs> Could you, I couldn't imagine anything more painful than no, Bruno you, oh. breastfeeding. I was going to say, can you imagine being Bruno, going on a vacation to your cousin's house and coming home and being replaced? And there's literally this like child latched at your mother's breast. No, I think it, it's been a lot for him, especially think about where we were like right before I gave birth. Like Bruno and I were attached at the hip, like attached at the belly we couldn't be apart for more than honestly an hour yeah like when I had to go to my doctor's appointments like I missed brew 
Bryce on ice and Bryce on ice and Bryce on ice and Bryce on ice and Bryce on ice. I just, I love Bryce. I was so grateful. Anytime, if you're feeling overwhelmed, like, you know, he's always welcome at Auntie's place. Thank you so much. It actually is so good to know. And I will perhaps use that going forward. And I just want to thank Theo for being so accommodating and selfless during this time. He's a selfless king. As that the big, is what as he the does. big cousin in in the group, as the number one guy in this group, that's what he does. Yeah, it's very true. Um, so what else do we want to recap? I mean, I've been going 100 miles an hour, and I have probably met in the last month a thousand toasters. Like, I not only have, I think I did five shows since we wrapped with five meet and greets, but also Ben and I and Brian have been going around. You know, Spritz is now in Total Wines in Florida. All, most, I think, all of the locations. And um, Total Wines and Bevmo's in all of California. So that's been really huge. And when I was in Florida and when I was in California for tour, we did these like little pop-up meet and greets. And I met like thousands of toasters. It was incredible. And everyone got to try Spritz for the first time. So a lot has happened in the last month. Like Spritz is like kind of like changing the world. Um, And don't forget to use code toast at SpritzSociety.com. Totally. Don't forget to do that. And have a spritz to celebrate the return of the toast. I'm so happy for the toasters that we're back. Like, everything is as it should be. Hmm. You know, it it was definitely, you know, hard to be away. But, you know, absence does make the heart grow fonder. And I do think, you know, of course, I say this all the time. Like, you do the show every day. Sometimes it feels like you're just, like, shouting into the void. But going off for a month and seeing how, like, people, like, need this show to live, that was really nice. And we only heard that because we were on maternity leave. So I just yeah. think, like, while it was torture, it was nice to know, like, people still watch the show. <laughs> yeah, and nice to know that we were missed. And I think we're all just, like, really feeling grateful for the toast today. Yeah, I think we all love the toast. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it oh, feels... Speaking of Nickelodeon, Ooh, yeah. speaking of Nickelodeon, speaking I, of. Um, this Friday on The Toast, I'm sure you guys already know, Josh Peck from Drake and Josh and the Vlog Squad is joining me to co-host. He's promoting his book, which I have gotten into. I started reading it and I was like, going to finish it. And I'm like, I have to talk about this in a week. So I held off on like this, the second half. I'm going to finish it this week right before he comes on. It's such a good book. I actually think it comes out tomorrow. Um... And I think that, like, everyone should try and get it and read it before he comes on because it's really in-depth. And I'm, like, going to go hard. He's going to host with me, but then on the second half of the show, I want to do, like, a full book book recap with him. It's such a good memoir. Like, really good. Okay. I'm so excited to read it. You said such good things. And I do have a bit of reading time in my schedule. I started a book a few weeks ago, uh, like, two weeks ago. It's taken me a while, but it's, like, the perfect thing to do when, um, like, Harry falls asleep on me and I don't want to, like, make a lot of noise because it's so precious. So I will add that to my book cycle. And speaking of yeah, books, it's you know, really it's, good. it's never too late to become a redhead. Though never. you might want to skip this month because the reviews for the book are dastardly. But oh, really? Who chose it? Yes, Dana. And Dana's never flopped before, so she's allowed. Mm. But the good Dana's news is... Dana's in her flop era. The worse the book is, the better the episode is. So... That's true. You know, it's a give and take. It feels like very RDH yeah. to just jump right in right now. I just, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's time. But I don't know what more I can like. Is there anything else everyone. you want to talk about? I mean, I have a million things I want to talk about. I mean, I need to. We need to obviously do like a Patreon episode just about like the first month and all the ins and outs and like taking people's questions and such because I I've been getting like so many questions about you know how things are going. But oh, I just also wanted to give one other shout out to something that I watched. I started watching it like two days before I went into labor. And then I was watching it like the first three weeks, like when I had a time. And that is the show Ladies of London. I can't even tell you how incredible the show is. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I decided to rewatch it. It's three seasons of utter perfection. And it was so like... It was such a joy to have in my life. And I was like looking forward to it so much like when I'm pumping, like that's what I would watch. And if you're looking for just like premium content, that show just lives rent free in my mind now. That show was really like a moment in time. Yes. And it it was filmed like six years ago, but it's as relevant as ever. And also now that like I, I just am like so into British history, like the things that they do in the places that they went, like obviously Mapperton is it's is a character in itself. Right. 
but like every episode they're doing something so fabulous like going to castles going to Scotland going to Denmark like there's so much history there it's an amazing show I just like needed to shout that out and you know what's so funny about Mapperton is I feel like um ever since watching The Crown I too have been like you know not as much as you like just dabbling in British history and some of the documentaries I watch on like stuff Julie is in every documentary she's like a royal expert in everything no yeah she her brand now is like the American Viscountess Mm -hmm. and she has like a Patreon and a YouTube channel where she like tours different a Patreon a Patreon she tours different like uh stately homes Mm -hmm. And where we were watching something, I guess it was yes. When we were on vacation, we were watching we, a documentary on High Clear, the, the real house in Downton Abbey, and they just had all these different experts talking about like what it's like to maintain these homes, how much you know it costs, etc. And she was like one of the royal experts. Yeah, which is a great path for her. But after watching Ladies of London again, Ooh. I'm just like I have no, I have no time for her. And it's also making me so excited for Real Housewives of Dubai because of Caroline Stanberry. I mean, Caroline Stanberry is a queen, like, unapologetically. Everything of the sort. Everything, Everything of the of sort. The sort. In- it was insane. So if you're looking for just something good to binge watch that's, like, mindless, but also, like, quite mindful, mm-hmm. Ladies of London. That's my tip I mean, of the day. Season one, Ladies of London, Caprice. Like, that was truly, like, an iconic moment that most people will never get to experience again for the first time, you know? Yeah, and then she was just, like, swiftly never to be seen or heard from again. Mm -hmm. No, like, is she okay? I know, and I was finishing season one when I went into labor, and that's when, like, Caprice goes into labor. She's having one um, child. No, like, so she had hired a surrogate, and then, like, a month later got pregnant naturally. So she was having two kids within a month of each other and like as she's go like talking about being dilated and stuff I'm like oh my gosh like I'm dilating it was just like very simpatico you and Caprice kindred spirits kindred spirits so I guess with that we can jump right in and you know maybe I'll remember things that I just wanted to share I feel like every time something happened I'm like I gotta talk about this on the toast well, run of show for today is we're going to do the Fast Five, mm-hmm. little TV recap, the finale of the worst season of Housewives of all time, Real Housewives mm-hmm. of Salt Lake City season two. We'll recap. And then it's Monday, which means our Unburden Yourselves segment is on. It's actually only our second time ever doing the segment because we did it once and then we went on maternity leave. So right. Unburden Yourselves is our Monday segment where you can write in and tell us something you did over the weekend that you just need to get off your shoulder and therefore in- unburden yourselves. Um, We've got three unique ones. Um, and if you ever want to submit it's unburden yourselves plural unburden yourselves <laughs> we couldn't get the email unburden yourself so it's unburden yourselves at gmail.com great and now i guess without further ado do, 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 do it is time for the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast How? yes and today's episode is brought to you by the solo stove Upgrade your backyard with a solo stove fire pit. It is the perfect catalyst for getting outside and spending more time with family and friends. You can build lasting memories around a solo stove fire pit. Solo stove is literally the only way to make a fire pit. We live in apartments and we still have one for any time we go on vacation. It's smokeless. It's so easy. It's like super easy to transport. If you don't have a fire pit in your backyard and you want to get one, this is actually a really um, affordable way to do that. And it's just engineered the best way because it's made with premium grade 304 stainless steel and it has a 360 degree airflow system that maximizes the efficiency and minimizes the smoke. So you don't have to be sitting there getting smoke in your eyes being like, this is great when it's not. It's easy to light (laughs) with just a few bits of starter and then your fire is blazing in minutes. It's perfectly portable. You could take solo stove with you on camping trips and more. So whether you live in an apartment or a house, it's just great to always have. Um, we've used it many, many times and we're city dwellers. And if you have a backyard, like highly recommend it's just everyone wants a fire pit, but there's like no reason to get like this really expensive one that like always breaks. A solo stove is everything of the sort. It's portable. You can bring it in. You can leave it outside. It's great. And you could shop now and get up to 30% off fire pits all month long when you use the promo code toast at checkout to get a $20 coupon. So they're having a 30% off month long fire pit sale. And then you can get an extra $20 off when you use code toast. They also offer uh, lifetime warranty and free 30-day returns. So it's simple. Go to solostove.com, S-O-L-O, stove.com. And remember to use code TOAST to get that $20 off. Solo Stove, do it. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by Liquid IV, which has been a life-saving product for me um, in this last month, going on <laughs> tour a million times, going on many benders. I was in Vegas. It was a journey. Liquid IV is everything you need because staying hydrated is really hard. One goal I personally have for myself is to be, you know, more take better care of my mind, body, and spirit. And we're going to be doing that with the help of our favorite hydration product, Liquid IV. So one stick of Liquid IV goes into 16 ounces of water and it hydrates you faster and more efficiently than water alone because it contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. There's um, endless uses for Liquid IV. I think obviously for me personally, being hung over is a great time to use liquid IV. Um, but there's a million times and just like being hydrated throughout the week is so important. You can really feel the difference in like your mind, your clarity. Um, and liquid IV is super easy. It's very time efficient because it's just way faster than drinking water. It's super effective and they're on a mission to change the world. They've donated over 19 million servings globally. So grab liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code toast. So that's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code toast at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com promo code toast. Great. Thank you. Now, it's a pleasure. For our first story, category is the Kardashians. Everything that has happened, literally even in like the last 48 hours. Obviously, we're not talking about like Kanye and Julia Fox breaking up because that's old news. And it's all Um, been recapped on the Patreon if you're looking for that. Right. But there are a number of things that we're going to get to. And we just want to list them off so I don't forget when first we're talking about the text between Kanye and Pete that were shared yesterday the photo of Pete the tattoo Kim etc then we need to talk about Kim's quote about working hard and all of the backlash that that has sparked then we need to talk about Wolf Webster because Kylie shared the name of her baby boy like literally two hours after we finished the last episode of the toast and I have so many thoughts I have so many thoughts that I need to share. And then this morning, the Hulu extended trailer for the show yes. The Kardashians dropped. And there is so much in there. So let's start from the beginning. Kanye, Pete, ever since we went off the air, Kanye is still on Instagram, still, you know, sharing his truth, letting everyone know how he feels when he feels it. And yesterday he shared text messages from Pete Davidson. I'm going to read them to you. Pete said, yo, it's Skeet. That is, you know, (laughs) Kanye's name for Pete. He said, can you please take a second and calm down? It's 8 a.m. and it don't got to be like this. Kim is literally the best mother I've ever met. What she does for those kids is amazing. And you are so fucking lucky that she's your kid's mom. I've decided I'm not going to let you treat us this way anymore. And I'm done being quiet. Us. Grow the fuck up. And Kanye wrote back, oh, you using profanity? Where are you right now? And Pete took a screenshot, a selfie of him in bed and said, in bed with your wife. Uh, Okay, I just have to say, like, I'm obsessed. Like, (laughs) beyond. Yeah. I mean, they're so, they also, like, made their relationship like Instagram official mm-hmm. sort of like she posted a, a carousel of photos and, a like, dump he's he she took a big dump and he's in two of the pictures she is no longer Kim Kardashian West her divorce has been granted her name has been changed on Instagram and like she is moving I don't forward. think her divorce has been granted I think she's been legally categorized as single right does that not a divorce granted like how no the law is the law is reason free from passion I was gonna say that's That's, true the law is reason free from passion that's for damn sure (laughs) that's for damn sure (laughs) so she is just like forging ahead in this new era of her life and I think you know the last few months have been frustrating with Kanye and it seems like she's at a point now where she's like I'm not going to tiptoe around him anymore this is my new man and also like Kanye's not tiptoeing around her like he was out with Julia he has a new lady in his life and he's do like he's more public with his relationships than Kim is right now it's just like they don't seem as yeah. stable as Kim's. No, I think Kim and Pete by proxy have reached this point where like they have it's been a month now. A month that they have tried to handle everything privately, never once say anything publicly about Kanye, handle the whole thing with grace and just really try and keep it like within the family. And now after a month, it's abundantly clear that that's not an option for Kanye. So like why should Kim and Pete let them like let Kanye just drag them un um what's the word? Like without them responding like uncontested uncontested like no bitch now we're all playing like that okay and I loved these text messages first of all I'm okay like I know I said this the last time we were on 
the air and everyone like disagreed with me but like now even more like I'm kind of feeling like Kim and Pete like might be OTP like of course me the too. way he's like defending his family and the way he talks about Kim as a mom like his I was family. actually crying what yeah you just called Kim's family his family it's unclear One if he's day. even if he's even met the kids yet because Kanye was like saying a few weeks ago like you'll never meet the kids i think that that he has met them because in the text messages he was like i'll see you we can meet after saint's game like they were all going to saint's game oh shit okay that is yeah no it's so crazy like today it is march 14th like they met in october that's a long time no and the tattoo and the tattoo okay but like he gets tattoos really of like so many of the women that he dates which is why he has so many tattoos right right so it's not like as big of a deal for him as if like you got Ben's name tattooed on you which I feel like at this point I'd be comfortable doing like I'm in for the long haul you know right right so like yes it's surprising but also like I think he probably with every tattoo he gets he probably has a plan in place for how he's going to cover it up yeah no it's like not a big deal when you have that many tattoos like you just turn it into something else I agree but this whole saga just has really made me respect Pete so much I think those text messages they're up on Instagram like I encourage everyone to like really look into the I read them 55 times like him saying us 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 I was just unwell um him like defending Kim as the best mom ever which we know her to be and like it's and that's something she obviously like cares a lot about and I think that's why this whole saga has gotten to her because it's Kanye critiquing her parenthood parenting and me and Ben were actually talking about this in bed last night like about the TikTok thing and he was like Ben was saying you know I actually kind of agree with Kanye I certainly don't want our kids on TikTok. I'm like, no, 100%. But like, it doesn't even matter anymore what they're arguing about because the manner in which Kanye has handled it is so atrocious and it is borderline harassment that like, I don't even care what they're fighting about anymore. Kanye's wrong. Yeah, yeah. The the message has been lost, whatever yeah. it once was. And there's also like now all this, like every day it's something else and I haven't been keeping up. Like I'm just tuning back in now. And the fact that it's still ongoing is crazy. They, it's crazy. And they need to, this can't last. Yeah. And I guess like someone could say like, Kim, like this will just be over if you take North off of TikTok. And like, while that may be true, then you're just giving power to someone like, oh, you're going to bash all of us on social media. And then I'm going to give you what you want. That's just not that wouldn't be the smart thing to do, honestly. Yeah. But it's also like not just about North on TikTok anymore. Like it's about Pete. Like he really. Yes. But these like bouts on social media are triggered every time Kanye sees a TikTok. And they just did this trend on TikTok. I'm in love with an emo girl. It's a new Travis Barker, Machine Gun Kelly, Willow Smith song. It's so good. Me and Ben have been like all weekend. I fell in love with an emo girl. I heard Kanye. An emo girl. It's so good. I heard in Kanye's video, I didn't watch all of them or the whole things, but he was like, North singing, I fell in love with an emo girl. So It's such a good song. Okay, I'll have to check it out. I'm so behind. All I listen to now, music, are like songs that are going to come. Harry. Um, so oh, I don't so, know. Oh, so you're listening to a lot of Toast by Claudia Ashray. I'm listening to a lot of Claudia Ashray. Mm. Um, it's just the thing that's, it's the only thing that works. Kids love it. Kids, <laughs> kid tested, parent approved. Okay, <laughs> Okay, so that's the latest with Kanye and Pete, like, and I'm sure it's not the final. And now, like, Kim and, and Pete. And don't get me wrong. Wait, I'm, like, sad that Kim's going through this. But the fact that we got these text messages, like, as a result, and we got to see, like, Pete standing up for Kim, I just, I was overjoyed. Yeah, and now we're going to see, like, more Kim and Pete. Also, in the trailer for the new Hulu show, let's just jump really quickly, because it came out this morning, and there's so many different storylines that are happening, but Kim is talking about Pete, and he it is very much, like, part of the show. Also, Travis yeah. and Courtney are trying to have, have a, a baby. baby. Yep, Tristan and Chloe are there, but it's unclear. Like, it doesn't seem like she ever really took him back, but who knows what Kylie is talking about her pregnancy mm-hmm. Kendall is storming away from the table right. Scott is in it yes it seems like Kardashians but like I feel like they're even pulling back like one more layer and they were always like showing us all of the layers but I think that like there's probably a couple that they have concealed over the years but they're giving a little bit more of themselves like for this Hulu paycheck yes and so I don't want to skip again but the Variety article that she's getting a lot of backlash about, we'll talk about that. But in that interview, what a lot of people like are only talking about that one thing, obviously. But they talk a lot about how the style of this show is so different. Mm-hmm. It's very like documentary vibes. 
And, you know, towards the end with E, like E was trying to get certain things. They didn't say exactly what they were talking about specifically, but they said, you know, E wanted different things from the show and the way E wanted to set up the show was very different. And you could tell like those stupid gimmicks and like all these pranks and then like these fights, like it was like fights and pranks. It was so stupid. Um, So I actually think we're going to like this style of show much better. It seems like they're not wasting our time. Also, there's no commercial. So it's just like less standard, stupid show vibes, you know? Yeah, I agree. And they keep they kept talking about in the Variety article like drone footage, and mm-hmm. I was like, "What do you mean? We always get like an overshot of the Hun- house." But then when I saw <laughs> the whole show the, was on drones, right? Then I sh- saw the trailer, and it's like the drone zooms into Chris's office. Yeah, and so that's pretty cool. And I'm sure it's also easier to be comfortable. Not that they're not comfortable around the cameras, but instead of having like all of these people holding cameras around you, like if it's just a drone, like it's easier to just be real, feel, like more natural. It also seems like they talk directly to. To the camera while they're filming like it's not just we only hear from them in their confessionals yeah it seems like it's more of like breaking the fourth wall it looks so fucking premium i can, and it's oh. dropping in a month i honestly can't wait and like i somehow ended up on the kardashians on hulu pr list i don't know if you saw my stories i did i got this like big box that said kardashians on hulu and it was like filled with gorgeous things that's so gorgeous. They're doing a lot of promo, like, so... I, a month feels, like, really far away. Like, for the amount of press that they're doing, like, it should be dropping this weekend. Yeah. I would love to see Kim on SNL again. Like, I know it was only a year ago, but, like, to promote Not even. the new show. Yeah, maybe she'll go back because she has the inside track. Right. Even though I did watch this week's SNL, it was atrocious. And Pete was not in it for one minute. Because he's busy in L.A. Yeah. And Pete actually just got a new movie deal with Lauren Michaels. It's going to be, like, a comedy about his life which I feel like um every movie he does is like a dramatized version of his life like didn't we just watch King of Staten Island which was literally about him yeah and then the other one like Big Brother the one where he's like a big camper yeah like he does he's already done this movie (laughs) right we watched it for Toast Movie of the Week remember oh yeah 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 it was like Big Counselor stuck at home yeah adult (laughs) adult life something (laughs) Big adult. So, little some, something like that. Let's and Machine Google. Gun Kelly was in it. Yeah, yeah. And Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly was also in Staten Island. I didn't watch Staten Island because I saw Big Adult and that was enough for me. Big Adolescence. Me, big big time adolescence. Okay. <laughs> Got it. We were so close, big adult. So counselors. close. <laughs> little kid. <laughs> um now we can talk about the Variety article. Like, I hate that this moment got over, like, overshadowed the whole thing because it actually was a really interesting video to watch. I mean, whoever was doing the lighting in the video, like, did the girls absolutely no justice. Um, but obviously what everyone's talking about is, is, seems like nobody wants to work these days. Get your fucking ass up and work. Yeah, so Kim shares a quote about, I guess it's advice for, you know, how to succeed in business. She said, No, women in business. Women, yeah, she said, I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. And this has sparked like a ton of backlash. Um, of course, because Kim is a billionaire now. She's got nannies and assistants and chefs and trainers. So it's easy for someone in that position to be like, Get your ass up and work, someone who doesn't really live in the real world. And as a lot of people pointed out, was born in Beverly Hills. And yeah, I don't think that takes away from her work ethic, but it definitely puts you in a position of privilege with access to things. And so while it was definitely an out of touch thing to say, I do know what she was trying to say, which is definitely like we live in this culture and it's like the stereotypes about millennials is like millennials don't work. And we like I know what she was trying to say, but it was like not the vibe. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about this. First of all, I think, like, the most outspoken critic was Jamila Jamil. Um, yeah. And this is what she said. She said, I think if you grew up in Beverly Hills with a, with super successful parents in what was simply a smaller mansion, nobody needs to hear your thoughts on success slash work ethic. This same 24 hours in the day shit is a nightmare. 99.9% of the world grew up with a very different 24 hours. I so, completely agree. I just want to say one thing about Jamila Jamil, because I, like, mm-hmm. love her so much. She's, like, been one of my role models, but she's always coming for the Kardashians and she comes for women a lot and it's just like I and I think her points are valid but it's like I'm just more of a type of gal who lifts each other up you know yeah I mean when I read this variety article and I read that quote like it did not stand out like and I saw the video too and it was like before there was backlash it was like shared as like you know some like an empowerment thing Mm -hmm. like get your fucking ass up and work and it didn't like strike me as anything other than like 
just promoting hard work, which is a, a value that I think is valuable. And yeah. then seeing all of these different perspectives, I'm like, okay, yeah, if you look at it like that, like you could be offended by it. But I just think in general, like all she's saying is like, work hard and not necessarily like do people who work hard have success and people who are successful sometimes don't even work hard like there are other factors that go into having success but I think in general just like promoting the concept of like hard work hard work isn't a bad thing isn't a, it shouldn't be a controversial thing I think you know if you're gonna like dissect the quote I mean I guess they must have asked her like what is your advice for women in business that was the because, question because this should just be advice for anyone in business like right not just women but they asked her for women specifically no and you know what like it's easy to poke fun at this answer because like it is a little cringe but you know so I made this Instagram reels like about this particular um video it was like very funny I mean it got over a million views feel free to check it out and my (laughs) god the comments like holy shit every comment is like yeah well I don't want to have a sex tape so I have to work hard sex tape sex tape sex tape and I just got done watching Pam and Tommy which was incredible by the way um and you really see like the the consequences of having like your sex tape leaked especially as a woman like for Pam Anderson it was like so horrifying and so detrimental to her career whereas like Tommy Lee was a rock star who took his dick out at concerts like it didn't have as much of an effect on him um so just having seen that and then see like everyone be like sex tape sex tape really there's plenty of people who have a sex tape who don't have a three billion dollar company so like right. Kim does know a thing or two about how to build a business and maybe how she built her business is by non-stop hard work so that's her experience right. I don't think we can devalue that just because she did grow up in a privileged lifestyle which definitely gave her easier access to it yes. but let's not forget she's faced many challenges a hundred percent but also there are so many people who are born into privilege who completely squander like every who opportunity nothing. who do nothing who create nothing who if anything, end up in jail and yeah like there are so many different especially like in the hollywood yep. world like yeah, there aren't that many kims out there and i think what separates her from even just like a moderately successful celebrity is her work ethic and it's 100%. like percent when you think about all the things that she does and you could say like well yeah you know my work ethic would be strong if I was just like posting to Instagram too and it's like it's like not what she does for a living it's not what she does for a living like obviously she has all of these businesses she's also a mom she's also like elected to become a lawyer like Mm -hmm. she wakes up at literally 5 a.m like her business is so much like her body and her looks and she spends time two a days in the gym like this woman is working hard and that's her advice to other people like I think there if you want to you know break it down and be offended by it like go yeah, off I just think but it just wasn't think that me, deep for me it's just like you want to be successful work hard isn't something that I think we should all be against yeah no I agree I, I but I did watch it and like cringe a little bit um but it is good advice like hard work will always pay off yeah no I think like a good work ethic is something that we should be striving all towards for I agree right it's not like something that's like ooh, shouldn't that we should that. look down on yeah 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 I agree. I mean, I'm all for equality, but like on the last show, I think that was like a source of a lot of the anger, like especially as it pertained to Courtney, where it's like we're all getting paid equal money, but we're not contributing equal amounts of work. So um, I agree. And Courtney is like so interesting now that she's the most interesting to look at that I'm actually really um, praying for her to be an equal part of the pie. But that also goes for Kendall and Kylie. Yeah, no, I, honestly, it makes, me think Chris. Ke- it makes me think of Kendall and Kylie more because even though Courtney was always complaining, like she was there and she, she was showing up. up. And I have, I can't imagine Kylie was getting paid for those last seasons when she was not on. And I also think for Courtney, like being in this season of her life, like when you are happier, you yes. are there, you want to share these things. Mm-hmm. Like when, like there was so much that she didn't want to share. And so it just really siloed her. And I imagine she's just like, let it, you can even see on her Instagram, like, yeah, she's in a sharing state of mind. Yeah, I agree. And I think the revelation that they want to have a child was like so shocking to me. It just didn't occur to me because they both already have like big families. Um, and I, my first thought was like, oh my God, that must be crushing for Scott. Oh, no, my first thought was, like, I couldn't believe that they were sharing it with us, considering there's been all this speculation. Like, every time she steps out, like, they're like, she's pregnant. Right. And they're just going to, like, take us on this journey with us and, like, be so open about something that is so private. Private. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm really happy for them. And now I'm, like, really equally excited to see every single sister. They all, I mean, of course, Kim always. Chloe is the best. Courtney has this, like, whirlwind romance. Kylie's pregnant. And Kendall, I feel like we literally know nothing about. Yeah, like, what's she been up to? And actually, she's, like, you know, been sharing more about her relationship. Maybe we'll hear more about it. Probably Yeah, not. I would love to. 
girl can dream. Yeah. So there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon for the Kardashians. Now we are 45 minutes into this episode pretty much and we are still on story one. Oh, wait, no, okay. there's more shit. Sorry, there's more oh. Kardashian shit. We need to talk about Wolf Webster because um, I have so many thoughts and – on Friday when we wrap the show, Kylie posted to her Instagram. I Okay, I know this is crazy and it's probably not true. But we dropped the episode like two hours before she posted. And I had said like, I just really am dying to know Kylie's name. And when you're pregnant and breastfeeding and like postpartum, like I do think podcasts are a wonderful medium. And I think that there's a chance that Kylie heard what I said. And then she put it out there for me. Okay, you know me. I'm as delusional as the next girl. And I just think that that's not true. <laughs> I think it's – I really think it's possible. Like, imagine she's, like, perusing for podcasts. She goes – she likes a little bit of comedy. She goes over to the comedy section. This is what I've been doing. I've been, like, looking for podcasts. So, like, I go to, like, the episodes. And, like, we're always up there. Like, there's a chance that she has become a toaster in yeah, the last few months. I don't think Kylie's out here listening to podcasts about pop culture. Like, she lives in pop culture. That's true. I wonder what her interests are. She probably listens to stuff about, like – aliens true crime yeah like shit normal people listen to damn well Kylie if you're listening give me a sign yeah okay how about that Kylie if you are listening to this podcast which I know that you're not post something on your Instagram story today about nature or post a picture like of your manicure if you have one because that's a manicure or like trees okay what a gorgeous day in Calabasas stunning except that she just posted this morning she's getting on a plane and she posted a beautiful sunset so I'm sure she has her nails done for the trip please post a picture of your manicure or she could post the sunrise like you know what I mean yeah okay so she posted that she named her son Wolf Webster and I love the name and I promise you for about an hour Zach and I were here and like in the family chat like thinking about Wolf Weinreb it was never number it was never like going to be his name but like we didn't really have a second choice for a name and like by the time I gave birth like Wolf was was my number two (laughs) (laughs) I completely agree I love the name especially like Wolf Webster Wolf Weinreb like I like the uh, alliteration um I love the name and I loved it for you too and I was like fully supportive of changing Harry to Wolf yeah except like he's such a Harry he's so not a wolf especially in some lights like he does have a little strawberry in his hair and he's literally Prince Harry he is Prince Harry, and he, he there's nothing wolfy about him, so it was never going to suit him. I don't know. I've, I, seen him, I've seen him at that breast. It's pretty wolfy. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people did not like the name Wolf for I Kylie. Know. That was a consensus that I was seeing, but it's one of, if not my favorite, of the Kardashian names so far. I completely agree, because it's like a com- – it's not common, common but it's not but it, uncommon. It's like – it's not Stormy. Stormy right. is not, actually, I guess like there was like Stormy Daniels is the only other Stormy that I've heard of. And that's but, just a great legacy to leave. Name, namesake. <laughs> but um, Wolf, like other people, common people have named their kids Wolf recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not unheard of. Yeah. So I just thought it was a beautiful name and I needed to share that. And I needed to let you guys know that like Wolf Wine Reb was on the table. Almost. Not even almost, almost, but like we really all had a conversation about it. We all agreed it's not the name, but there was a conversation. A conversation was had, you're right. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. And then, of course, I was like, oh, my God, when I do give birth, I need to post Wolf Wine Rub to my story. And that was just like really funny. I'm just like such a comedian. (laughs) You're hilarious. Okay, let me check my list and make sure we've gotten through all the Kardashian talking points. And we have. Great. We are, we are ready to move on. It's time to move on. <laughs> it is time to move on. Are you ready for our next story? If it's a story that's brought to you by Honey. It is. Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for a coupon code is a thing of the past because Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites and when you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. If you wait a few seconds, Honey will search the coupons it can find for that site and then if they find a working coupon, you just watch the price drop. It's free to download. There's literally no reason not to have Honey. It works at so many websites. I've used it for makeup, clothing, food, electronics, like all my favorite websites use honey um and they even offer cash back at thousands of stores so it's basically like earning cash rewards just for shopping if you don't already have honey you are straight up missing out and by getting it you're doing yourself a solid and supporting the toast because we would never recommend something we don't use and we've been using honey since before we even started the toast so you can get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash toast that's joinhoney.com slash toast free to download save yourself time and money 
Love it. Thank you so much. Our next story is actually news from yesterday. Haley Bieber confirms that she suffered stroke-like symptoms due to a blood clot. So following reports that she was hospitalized this week, Haley Bieber clarified on social media that she suffered stroke-like symptoms due to a small blood clot in her brain. She posted, on Thursday morning, I was sitting at breakfast with my husband when I started having stroke-like symptoms and was taken to the hospital. They found I had suffered a very small blood clot to my brain, which caused a small lack of oxygen, but my body had passed it on its own and I recovered completely within a few hours. Although this was definitely one of the scariest moments I've ever been through, I'm home now and doing well, and I'm so grateful and thankful to all the amazing doctors and nurses who took care of me. That is so scary. Like, no blood going to your, no oxygen going to your brain for, like, a couple seconds. So scary. Um, it reminds me a little bit of, like, what happened to Kim Zolciak. But she had an actual stroke years ago. Oh, but when not she was super a- young. A blood clot? I don't know what it was, but it was just like, you don't hear about young people having strokes. It's like not common. Yeah. No, this was, it's definitely incredibly scary and shocking. And um, I, I mean, I'm glad she's doing okay, but that really can, like, is a crazy, like, young, healthy, knock on wood. Like, yeah. And something like this happens. No, so scary. Um, And, like, just to have it happen sitting at breakfast, like, a totally normal day. I'm sure Justin was there. Like, that is so freaky. Um. And I can only imagine how, like, scary it was if she was alone, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's just, like, something that is so bizarre. I hope she can find out. This feels like one of those, like, mysterious ailments that people spend, like, months and years trying to figure out, like, what happened. I hope she can find, like, the cause of what happened to her. Yeah, well, it's not, like, a mysterious ailment. Like, you know, I always, when I think of mysterious ailments, I think of, um... Lyme disease? No, I think of the show Royal Pains because they were always just like... Oh, like House. Have, yeah, and House too. Like where it's like, it's blah, blah, blah. Right. There's only one reported case in America in the last 50 years. Yeah. And it's like only this doctor can fi- can put it all together. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, it's very clear like what happened. She suffered a blood clot. And, but like and from what? What do you from get a blood clot from? Right. No, exactly. And especially like someone of her age and Fit. F- like there needs to be an understanding at least for her of what right what caused this right 100 percent. i'm really like sending her love i love hilly bieber has turned into one of my favorite celebrities in the last three years um like the way i would take a bullet for her like i just die like i die for her yeah no i totally agree she's really she's grown on me like in such a steady way Mm -hmm. that i don't see it ever turning because it's not like it was this like burst and sometimes things that burn quickly you know Julia they burn Fox. out they burn out too but like she has just been putting in the work for years now of of stanhood of a ship for her and justin like if those yes. two break up i'm like i i don't i i really don't think that they will ever break up no and i think also what makes me like her so much is like just by being herself and being married to Justin, like she has put herself at like the center of one of the most toxic fandoms in the history of pop culture. And she's never once like addressed it or leaned into it. Like she just lives her life. I'm sure it has to bother her that there are so many people. Like every time she gets paparazzi, it's like Selena, Selena, Jelena, Jelena. Like I can't, it's so toxic and so rude. Like they're literally married and they have been for years. Like fuck off. Yeah. Um, but I when I'm on TikTok, I see these like Jelena accounts like, oh, look at this picture of Haley and Justin. Justin's thinking about Haley. Like, Stop. I mean, Justin's thinking about Selena. Yeah. Like, shut up. Like, shut up. And she just handled the whole thing with like the utmost grace and elegance. And that cannot be easy. So like, that's part of the reason I like stand really hard. Yeah, I always forget about Justin and Selena, but then you always remind me because, like, you see the Jelena stands on TikTok. I don't. And since you brought up Selena, like, I just want to say she's been absolutely crushing it, like, on every red carpet. She presented at the SAG Awards, which I wound up watching a lot of. And they were, yeah, I don't know why. I think it was because I watched the movie House of Gucci. Mm, And I watched, oh, I watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye and Spencer. Oh, my God, I watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye also. Okay, I watched it on the plane, and the plane ride home was so quick. I still have 25 minutes left. Like, they just did that interview, um, like, where when after everything blows up. Okay, yeah, the last 25 minutes, um, they do drag it out. They love to do that. And I had a lot of thoughts. I mean, it's a crazy story. I loved it, by the way. There was something about it that just, like, didn't – connect for me I can't explain it like the like the quality of the movie like it felt just like sometimes with these like you know real people and we're just gonna like dress up like them and tell the same story it just like feels like 
theater. I mean, I know that it is theater. No, but I it just doesn't feel like artistic. I can't explain it. I thought Jessica Chastain was incredible. I mean, everything she does. And it's clear like she loves this woman and her story and like took the job of telling Tammy Faye's story so seriously because Tammy Faye, and I was like Googling pictures of Tammy Faye on the plane because I wanted to see what she actually looked like. And there was this article like of a picture of Tammy Faye and RuPaul. And it was like how Tammy Faye became like an LGBTQ plus icon. Like it's clear that like Jessica Chastain like either knew the story before or just like found the role and fell in love with Tammy and like no, wanted to do justice. That's exactly what it was. I watched her on the red carpet and she had been working on this for 10 years. Mm. She just and even in, she won for her role. Oh, and good. even in her speech, she just like talked about like this love that she has for Tammy and like how Tammy was just like this loving person. So she clearly did want to do justice for her. And I mean, I can't even just watching the movie like there was not a more trusting you know, open-hearted person who couldn't even see, like, this monster. That, no, you know, do you know what like, she con- was? She was a believer. She was a good Christian. Like, she was, like, I think, I mean, I'm not Christian, but it's, like, exactly what the Bible tells you to be, like, kind to everyone. Like, she was a good Christian, and that made her, like, extremely vulnerable and, like, mm-hmm. open to people taking advantage of her. Like, that scene where Andrew Garfield is, like, making fun of her with his friends, like, I wanted to die. Like, that was so sad. So sad. No, it was a great movie. I'm so glad that you watched it too. And then I watched House of Gucci, which was also a pretty good movie, except for the fact that I'm sorry to say. I know what you're going to say. Lady Gaga ruined it. Yeah, no, I actually have heard similar sentiments. It just wasn't seamless, you know? Like, you were just constantly aware of who she was. I want to say Jared Leto, like, was the most amazing part of the movie. You should watch it. It was a story that I did not know, so you don't know how it's going to end. And it was, a, I mean, it's a crazy story. But she did not, I, I mean, if she if she wins any awards for it, like, it, that's just not. Well, she was snubbed for an it. Oscar, um, even though, I don't know if it's, like, a snub if you didn't deserve it. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think also, it's a snub. I just want to say, like, if... If there wasn't all this, like, Oscar buzz around it, like, she wouldn't be held to such a high standard. You know, every time she's in yeah. the they're like, will she become an EGOT? And right. it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. So if she's just, like, acting in a, if we're just looking at her as acting in a movie, like, it was fine. But, like, yeah. there was nothing Oscar worthy about it. Um, And Spencer, okay, Spencer was literally the movie Jackie. Because, first of all, it takes place over, like, three days at, I think it was Sandringham, I think, for Christmas. Um, And I just hate movies that focus on, like, one specific period in time. I still also have 20 minutes left because the flights were so short. So I need to finish both of these movies. So I don't know, maybe the movie's longer than those three days at Christmas. I don't think so. Um, And to be honest, like, I did not think it was good. First of all, like, I don't know what Diana was like in person, but if she was anything like Kristen Stewart, then I would have fucking hated her. Like, the way she talked, like, Kristen made her so annoying. And the movie actually makes Diana look terrible. Like, I don't know if, like, if that was the point, but it made Diana look, like, bad. Should I watch it? Mm, no. I don't think I like it. I want a, a movie about the whole story. And I just want the to crown. say, like, airlines, literally, airlines don't get enough credit. Like, they had all these Oscar movies that, like, some that are still in theaters, like, on United and Delta. Like, I was so excited to be watching Tammy Faye. Like, that was just, I wasn't expecting such fresh, gorgeous, relevant content on Delta. Yeah. I'm glad that, yeah, we're so relevant. Movie They're keeping up. Here. Look at us, Oscar girlies. Yes. Ebert, Ebert I'm and Sarah Roper. Kenyon with the Eyewitness News Movie Minute. Ebert Roper. What the fuck is that? They're movie critics. They're critics. You know what we are, Jackie? Pen Teller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for our next story? Yes. It's some news about our favorite guy, Elon Musk, and he is a father again. Grimes is spilling the tea that they welcomed a second second child secretly in December. So Grimes um, sat down for a wide-ranging interview with Vanity Fair, and she shared the news that her and Elon welcomed a daughter via surrogate in December. You know what's so funny is um, she didn't really reveal. Oh, Bruno, he hears his auntie. Like, Grimes didn't really reveal anything. She invited Vanity Fair into her home to do an interview, and the baby started crying, and she was like, oh, I don't know why I, like, assumed you guys could come here and not know that there was a second child upstairs. So, yeah, we had a baby. Yeah, which is just so cute. They're not together right now. Were they together Um, when they contacted the surrogate? 
I would imagine yes. I mean, that would have been, well, more than nine months before December because, you know, it takes a while to yeah, yeah, yeah. get these things going. Um, and 10 months because pregnancy is 10 months. So why does everyone say nine months? Right, right. So it's really like probably over a year. Yeah. And they were together over a year. I mean, I imagine they were together when they set out on this journey. And now they have um, a daughter, which is just like so exciting, exciting news. It is. I always forget that Elon has like six other kids. Yeah, he does. He is a big I think he's father. at eight now. <laughs> So he has five other children from a previous so seven. marriage. Seven. And um, that's a lot of kids. I mean, I guess when you have like unlimited wealth, like you can have as many kids as you want. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. And there's just like so much love yeah. in his heart to go around. The name of um, <laughs> their daughter is Exa Dark Side Rail Ma- Musk. I and can't. they they nickname her Y, which is actually really cute because they have baby X. And Y, and then it's like X chromosome, Y chromosome. Like, no, like they're I, so science. scientific. I yeah. get it, but like I can't. Like I just can't. What happened to Sarah? What <laughs> happened to Matthew? Like I can't. Yeah, no, I agree. But like you know, Elon and Grimes are never going to be that way. So at least like they have X and Y. Like I can work with that. No, like I at least I can understand it. You know. Yeah, but like they keep using this symbol where the A and the E are like touching. <laughs> Yes, and I'm familiar. How is that pronounced? What is that? Um, you are so asking the wrong girl. I have literally <laughs> no idea. Okay. Like, I, if I could just get clarity on that. I could I could deal with the rest, you know? No, I, I'm, not, I'm not the girl for the clarity. Sorry. Okay, cool. Anyways. They don't really- call me, they don't call me Clardia. <laughs> <laughs> These two, um, that was a I'm good sad joke. that. I'm sad they're not together, but I'm glad that they're they, – and she says, like, he's her best friend. Like, they are good. Good. I'm happy for them. I but, like, can't. if you love him so much, like, why not just be together? I hate shit like that. Like, I'll love you always with all my heart. Okay? So get married. I think they'll get back together. But I say that about everyone, and then they fucking hate each other. Yeah, totally. Lala and Randall. You're the curse, too. You're the curse. Lala and Randall. Kim and Kanye. Yeah, so I'm just going to say Grimes and Elon, I don't ship. I hope they never get back together. Perfect. Put that into the universe. But you have to say it more convincingly because I'm not believing anything you're saying. Oh, yeah. No, I want to see Elon and Kim. Honestly, same. Yeah. That'd be cute. Are you ready for our next story? Yes, ma'am. We could not do today's episode without letting you know that justice for Jesse mm. was served. The Empire Star was sentenced to 150 days in county jail for staging the hate crime and lying to authorities. So last week he was sentenced uh, for staging his own hate crime and filing a false police report with the police a little bit more than two months after the jury convicted him on five counts of disorderly conduct. Um, he this- did then have like some like a breakdown in in the courthouse basically telling everyone that if anything happens to him like please know he's not suicidal yeah which honestly i'm i'm glad that i know that now because if anything does happen like now we know now we know he said quote i'm not suicidal and if anything happens to me when i go to jail i didn't do it to myself and you must all remember that okay i mean a lot of people have been talking about this like and i feel like we've been talking about it forever like do you think this is like a fair sentence like taraji p henson is on instagram like Basically acknowledging, like, he lied and made this whole thing up, but, like, this is, you know, a harsh sentence. Oh, is that what people are saying? I think there's, like, people are divided. Um. What is it, 120 days? What is that, four months? 150. Five months? Yeah. It's a long time. But, like, he did lie. I don't know. Like, I feel like, you know, lying to police and, like, wasting police resources is, like, something that we're always, like, threatened with. Like, on on SVU, they're always, like, you know, lying to the police is a crime. I I don't know if I remember in, in recent memory of anyone actually getting convicted for lying to the police and wasting police resources yeah but also like in such a big way you know I think there's a difference yeah. between like placing a 911 call you know that's what you like are told when you're a kid like you can't like that would be the equivalent but th- this was just like a whole bigger thing investigation, investigation. there was like it I, went I on for long how long did it go on between when he you know called the police and when everybody found out that it was a lie like it was kind of a few weeks no like at least two weeks i that's how i feel like i remember it i feel like i remember it being like a week maybe less Mm. okay but you know my memory is literally the worst on the planet so don't believe anything no no no. i feel like it maybe could have been a week i feel like it was like everyone was talking about it and then like slowly like people like stopped and then one person was like what and then a bunch of people were like oh my god he's lying (laughs) yeah so i don't know i feel like you know me like i 
I was ready for justice. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Taraji's like getting to me. I'm like, is this? So like- would you have like wanted to see less jail time or like a sentence of community service and a fine? I don't know. I'm just like, it just gets real. Like for me, one of my biggest fears in life is going to jail. So five months in jail is like so much. Yeah. But also, and like, it just, to me, it's like a crime, but like, he lied, you know? I lie all the time, you know? I'm not saying that I would ever do this, but you know what I mean? Like, it's, to me, I'm just, now it's very real. Yes, it is real, but I think it's been real. What he was, you know, saying had happened to him was beyond real. Yeah. You know, I just don't know how to feel. Like, I thought I would feel more excited. I'm like, justice, because we've been following the story for so long. What he did is so egregious. Like, it's so horrible. Um, and the fact that he's still maintaining his innocence is just beyond me. Um, and now I'm just like, oh, my God, five months in jail. Like, that's just a lot. Yeah. Well, that's what it is for Jesse. So. The Jesse saga is over. That's what it officially means. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that's crazy. And speaking of things that are not over, are you ready for our fifth and final story? Is it um, about Tom Brady being such a drama queen? Drama queen of the NFL, Tom Brady says he's returning as Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback next season. Okay, so literally two months has it been, not even, even. since he, you know, made his big swan song and let us know he's out the door, he's hanging up his jersey, (laughs) and now he said these past two months where, by the way, like, no football was played, he didn't miss a game or anything. And no one was really like, oh, I wish Tom Brady didn't retire. He's 41. Like, everyone, like, said their farewells, but, like, his season was over, so he says this, these past two months I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands, but, like, when were you in the stands at a time when you could have been in the field in the last two months maybe like at practice he said that time will come but it's not now I love my teammates and I love my supportive family they make it all possible I'm coming back for my 23rd season in Tampa unfinished business LFG which means let's fucking go I oh thank you grandma yes (laughs) um I do remember when we reported on his initial retirement that like I didn't really feel like he should have went out on a loss like it's the greatest of all time you always want to go out on top and I still firmly believe two years ago when he won he should have retired like he you know he said I came to Tampa I made a team out of this team and I won the Super Bowl and that's why I'm the greatest goodbye mic drop then he stayed for another season and he lost so like now he's just in this limbo place where I feel like he's not going to retire until he wins one more time because he cares about his legacy I just would have hoped that like he would have thought that through before he made a big stink and now it's like he's the boy who cried retirement. The next time he tells us he was retired, nobody's going to believe him. Like, I just feel like... I feel unless, like he's being very wishy-washy with his legacy. He is. And, like, if you're going to retire and come back, like, maybe give it a year, two years, and then it's like he's back. But, like, to give it two months at a time when, like, there were no football games that you missed is just so dramatic. You know, and, it's like nobody. Tom Brady. Actually, I'm not going to retire. Yeah, no, but also nobody. Tom Brady, I'm retiring. It's like nobody was, like, waiting for you to retire either. No, I mean, I do think people were, like, questioning, like, when his last season would be. Just because he's at a certain age. That's it. Yeah, but he's still at the top of his game. I mean, even though he didn't make it to the Super Bowl, like, he's the best quarterback in the league, though. I've been overhearing a lot of PTI, and I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league. And he just signed the— What the fuck is PTI? It's a sports show, Pardon the Interruption, that Zach oh. watches every day. I thought it was called Pardon My Take. That's the barstool one. Got it, got it. There's a lot of P's in sports. Um, so Aaron Rodgers is apparently the best quarterback in the NFL. And also, sidebar, he just signed the biggest contract ever, $250 million, to stay with the Packers. And him and Shailene were spotted together. So, like, I, I believe I spoke about their breaking up on the Patreon episode, and I was like, utterly devastated like no, I I'm, thought they were so great together I'm devastated by the news if they broke up I'm heartened by the news that they're back together yes I don't want to put too much energy into it and just to be disappointed and clearly they're on shaky ground if there was ever yeah. a breakup to begin with so it's like that's not good um but I, I just love those two and it just goes to show you how like minds can be changed hearts can be changed because when they first got together we were like who in the what no a hundred percent and I just feel like I really understand Shailene Woodley now when I started off just not understanding her and her like distaste for material items. I hate people like that. Yeah. But then she, you know, she's with, she just got back together with him after a $250 million contract. Yeah. By the not way, to that's say that like, the two are really. No, no. But that's like, so that's also like Grimes and Elon. Grimes is like anti-capitalism. Like I, I 
see some of her TikToks and it's like money is evil. Like, I don't know what her entire philosophy is, but it's like, I think it's like communist vibes. I think like she believes in like communism and like shared wealth when like she's literally having children with Elon, the richest man on the planet. And then it's yeah. like Shailene Woodley, like will not buy socks. Like she needs to have her feet be grounded to the earth. But then also, oh, who's your partner? The highest paid uh footballer NFL. in the NFL yeah. like I just can't with everyone and like does nobody have values <laughs> principles like okay you no. don't want you don't want someone who makes 250 million dollars a year fine I do okay so yeah. fuck off no by the way answer to your question nobody has values nobody got has it. principles got it got yeah it. no and they all claim to like Grimes is all principled about I'm sorry I'm not really 100% sure what her philosophy is but I know it's like very like new age you know um economist I don't know but it's like it's like hating the rich eat the rich so yeah. literally like girl what are you doing go date someone you know who, who makes no money because you hate money that's what you just said yeah yeah well and it's maybe like, okay, you know what maybe you don't have to date someone who has no money but you're gonna date the richest man on the planet right who has become like the poster child for, for money and capitalism yeah right but maybe con- conversely she loves him so much that even, you know, it transcends values. It ch- like, even though they are so different, they just can't help but be together. I mean, it's possible, but um, I don't know. I just think it's funny. That's also like what Shailene reminded me of. Like, yeah. she's like this earthy queen granola. I remember reading an article once, like, she disposed of all of her material items, like, yada, yada, yada. Um, okay, so why are you dating someone who has $250 million? Well, that makes sense then why she didn't wear shorts when they went on that hike. Right. No, she's anti-material items. She's anti-material. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, those were the Fast Five stories. I feel as though you needed to know them. And now, you know, I'm pushing my luck with how long Harry is going to stay sleeping. I can't believe I've gotten. Honestly, me too. We're at like an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. No, it's any moment now. Um, Okay. So let's dive into the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City recap. It's not going to take a long time. You think the people would prefer that over unburdening yourselves if something has to get cut? unburden yourselves okay unburden Wait. yourselves is brought to you by curology i actually just got my third curology package i've been on it for like over a year now it's a game-changing custom skincare made for you by a dermatology provider so they'll create a custom prescription cream for your specific goals whether that's acne pores skin texture dark spots fine lines or something else. You'll start by taking a short online skin quiz and uploading the photos. And if it's a good fit, they'll ship you your formula right to your door. It even has your name on the bottle. I mean, we all have such different skin. I don't know why we would all be using the same products. So Curology is just really the answer to everyone's questions when it comes to their skin. Like, here are my problems. Here's my skin texture. Here's my skin type. Give me a custom formula. Like, you and I, Jackie, have totally different skin. There's no reason why we should ever be using the same skincare products. Mm-hmm. So you can get started with Curology, just like we did, with a thirty a free 30-day trial at Curology.com slash toast. Just pay $5 for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash toast to start your free 30-day trial. You can cancel any time, and your prescription is subject to consultation. The consultation is super in-depth. They ask for, like, you know, really close up different angle pictures of your skin, bunch of different questions on your skin type. You have combination skin, you have dry skin, you have oily skin. It's really in depth. It doesn't take that long. And then you know you're getting like a really premium, really customized skincare routine. So that's Curology.com slash toast. Pay $5 for shipping and handling. Curology.com slash toast for your free 30-day trial where you can cancel any time. Okay, let's dive into Unburden Yourselves, which is our Monday segment, our new segment where we feel like it is a safe space for you to write in. Tell us what you did this weekend that's been giving you a pit on this Monday. We can talk about it and then you can officially unburden yourselves. We're going to start off easy. This one's small, but I actually know the feeling. Small but mighty? Okay. Small but mighty. Just like us. Jackie and Claudia, mm-hmm. I feel awful. Today was my 32nd Wordle, and I was at the last one out of options, so I Googled what the answer was. I'm the worst. So I guess she's keeping her streak. Your streak. She's 32 in a row, and she didn't want to lose her streak, so she cheated. So you are a cheater. I just think it's important that you know that. But I actually am a really big proponent of cheating because mm-hmm. they always say cheaters never win and winners never cheat. And I think that's like the worst mantra we taught our kid, our, our, like the youth, because I've never cheated and felt bad. Except I'm not talking about like cheating on your partner. I'm che- talking about like cheating in games, cheating like on cheating tests. Like cheating life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not on your partner. Like, no, no, I'm not talking about that. 
I'm a big believer in cheating, so like I'm proud of you. You know what? Like you wanted your streak and you found a way to get it. It's not cheating. It's called being an ingenue. Yeah, no, I love how in the same episode we're like, work hard if you want success. Also, <laughs> also cheat. No, but sometimes I think success is a lot about working hard, cheating, and luck. I, I just want to say like cheating has a bad stigma when sometimes like cheating isn't bad. I know like that sounds crazy. I just will never forget being at camp as a kid and seeing that sign in the dining hall. Camp Vega. Winners never cheat and cheaters never win. And I was like, damn, that's powerful. And then the older I got and the more I got away with cheating and the more I benefited from like cheating on tests and stuff, I was like, that is a dumb fucking sign. Yeah. Well, no, that sign kind of makes sense because if you cheated, you actually didn't win technically. But oh, I think the true. saying cheaters never prosper is untrue because oh, I, you're so plenty right. of cheaters are prospering. No, and like I cheated on the test and got away with it and I'm therefore prospering. And then you could argue, well, you didn't actually learn anything. But here I am 20 years later, not ever once having needed the knowledge in which I cheated on. So who's really prospering now, bitch? Yeah, I think that when you cheat at things that are like foolish to begin with, such as Wordle, yeah, and especially new Wordle I've heard is – not it. The New York Times has ruined it. Confirmed. So I haven't wordled since the day I went into the hospital mm. because I was hearing like the New York Times ruined it. I was already like getting that vibe and I was just like over it. And so I think when you cheat at stupid shit, like you play stupid games and you win stupid prizes. And that's what you did with Wordle. 100%. When you cheat on meaningful shit, like you're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. No, of course. Like I agree with that. Even mm -hmm. though I did cheat on the SATs and I'm, um, you know doing just fine actually I don't feel like I should say that it's like a board of education gonna come for me they take yeah, it no, really seriously they take it really seriously so that was a joke boe I would never cheat okay next up <clears throat> hello Jack and Claude I just have to say this new segment has me dying this legit just happened to me but I need to tell someone and it's terrifyingly embarrassing before today I hadn't made a number two in a couple days I have Dulcolax overnight that I ended up taking last night when I got home from work fun fact it didn't work when I wanted it to Fast forward to sitting in my office today when all of a sudden I get the Sean Mendez sweats at my desk. I'm trying to finish up what I'm doing so I can make it to the bathroom, but unfortunately I didn't make it. The squirts started coming out before I even made it to the bathroom. I don't think I've ever heard noises like that come out of my body. I tried my best to clean it up, but I ended up being stuck in my dirty pants for the rest of the day. Luckily, no one said anything to me, but I'm so embarrassed and I want to die and I can never be seen around these people ever again. I think I have to quit. I think you have to quit too and there's your solution. I agree, and I don't know what episode we said this on, but, like, we literally just told you guys recently, like, laxatives, don't take them. They never work the way that you want them to. Mm -hmm. And I'm just in shock. Okay, like, if you shat your pants in the workplace, like, go home. Yeah, but no, I was finished like, out the work day. Like, wait, what are you, a cop? Like, you have to be there? You work in an office? You could go home and work from home and change your duty pants. Yeah, no, like, what is going on that you can't just like take a sick day when you have literally been sick in your pants but I do have to say like there is a lot to be learned here the first to be learned is I think if you work out of your home you should always in your desk have a pair of pants and a fresh clean of pair of underwear like you just never know where life's gonna take you maybe you get your period like yeah I think having a fresh pair of undies it's like you know what buy like just Hanes underwear on Amazon and have it shipped to your office and just throw it in your desk you never know when you're gonna need a pair of underwear like <laughs> I'm just like it, it's true. Like you never. Right, know but when then, you're like, care then about you're writing in saying my coworker found my underwear in my desk and I have a pit. Better, underwear. better than my coworker sniffed my duty from and my saw. pants. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Also, another thing to be learned here is like honestly, I think maybe you need to like take a few steps away from your job because if you can't even leave the office when you've taken a literal dump in your pants, I think you have a toxic like relationship with work. No, also, and, like, again, this is just, like, bringing me back to Kim Kardashian's quote, like, you're working too <laughs> hard now. You're working now, too like, hard, yeah. You're, you're someone, like, you need to work a little less and you need to have gone home in that situation. Right. Unless, like, it's your company, I don't think anyone needs to work that hard because at the end of the day, like, it's just a job. Yeah, but I guess it depends what the job was. Like, if you're the toll booth operator. We're being and, very like, conflicting and, today. We are. No, but, like, all of these, like, life is nuanced. Nothing is you know, the you know only what, like, thing that's true. What does a surgeon do if he's, like, mid-surgery and he gets the runs? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, there are some jobs where you actually, like, can't go home early in the middle of the day. Like, so. But an office job? Like, no, there's nothing you're doing at your office that you can't do from your computer at home. And we learned that in COVID. Right. No, I agree. And, like, if you were a toll booth operator, then no one's around you. So, like, 
you could shit your pants. <laughs> That's true. You really don't have co-worker, co-workers in your booth. Right. It's like a very socially distant job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That is beyond funny. Okay, well, <laughs> you told us it's over, but learn from this. Okay, there's a lot to be learned. Keep underwear and maybe have a, a healthier balance of work and life. And you guys don't take laxatives. Never. That's the lesson. They never work the they way you never want them work. to. Yeah, to have a prune. Okay. He, have a prune. Here's the third and final one. Oh, my computer. Stop. Okay. We just went on a family trip to Disney. The day before we left, we were in Epcot, and I drank around the world one too many times. I woke up that morning so hungover. Oh, my God. That sounds like a nightmare. We drove to the airport. I got my seven-month-old out of the car, and I immediately pawned him off to another family member, saying I had to go pee. I ran into the airport at baggage claim, and I saw a family restroom. I ran to it, and it was locked. I looked around trying to find another bathroom. I saw it far away. I began running towards it and I immediately puked. I tried to hold it in my hands, but it went all over the floor. I looked around and it seemed like I was alone. I saw a water fountain, went over and washed my hands. I left the puke on the floor and then went back outside to grab my seven-month-old and acted like nothing happened. By the way, being hung over at the airport with a baby is the worst way to travel. Oh my God, you just left the vomit. I guess that's better than like people seeing you, but like, I don't know, you should have alerted like a custodian or something because that's like someone's job to clean it up. <laughs> They'll find out soon. No. <laughs> they didn't need to be alerted. They have noses. Yeah, I mean – what you were sick like what could you do yeah People, no and you know what like throwing up is like really it happened i mean it's like because it was hung over you're hang you're hung over like it's your fault it's not 100%. No offense it's not like you were like sick and food poisoning this is like just like julia on real, real houses of miami you know yeah like if you were like genuinely sick and like you threw up like no one would fault you but because you're hang, like hung over it's like a little you bit your fault feel shitty yeah but like still in general like you can't help where you throw up and if you're just like vomiting like that what can you do you're sick i don't think there's anything worse than throwing up but i don't think there's anything better than how you feel afterwards like and i'm not talking about hangover i'm talking about like legitimately being ill or like food poisoning or like nausea it's crazy how amazing you feel afterwards yes if you're legitimately ill but like sometimes throwing up when you're hungover makes you no. feel worse because like you needed all of those nutrients and things that were in your belly and no, now you have i'm not nothing. talking about hangover i'm just talking you about have like nothing now have you ever been like food poisoned, like so nauseous sweating and then you finally throw up it's like heaven not in recent memory Oh, I ate at Philippe Chow um, and haven't been able to eat there since because I got the craziest food poisoning, like both ends. Me too, from there over 10 really? years ago. Yeah, but like a really long time ago. Me too. I was still living at home because I remember I was like throwing up in our childhood bathroom. I think they must have changed their menu because now we order from there sometimes. And Yeah, I've it took me years, okay. but I've eaten there, there somewhat recently. Yeah, so they got it together. They obviously knew. But you know what? If throwing up on the floor and running away is what this woman needed in order to successfully travel with a baby, then you know what? I respect that because traveling with kids, I, I mean, I've never done it, but I see other people in the airport and like I always just like my heart goes out to them. That's yeah. going to be you. No, I know. And I'm like, I'm never going anywhere again. They're always verklempt, like trying to break down their strollers, like trying to throw the kid in the baby bajorn. Like I always yeah. just like want to offer my help, but like I can't do anything, you know? The breaking down of strollers and like the car seat situation. We actually have an amazing stroller. It's like not like glamorous or anything and it's not that cute, but it's a stroller that becomes a car seat without any extra parts necessary. Mm. It's called the Duna. And... um it's incredible. I mean, especially because like we're like we no, but like, places we don't have a car. But like right. uh, for tr for being in the airport, it sounds ideal because then you don't need to like carry a car seat with you. No, I could just literally like see you and Zach trying to board. Zach's trying to break down the stroller. Like you're getting frustrated. The kid is getting fussy. Like I could just see it. Like and that to me, like when I have a child, I will not be leaving the state for ten years. No, that's my plan. But Zach has gotten pretty good about like breaking it down and stuff and that's like that always reminds me of that scene from um what to expect when like all those dads have like they're locked and loaded <laughs> and like you need to have like a training day with your partner where yeah. they like get it down to under a minute of doing all of the different like tasks contraptions contraptions Okay, so it appears as though, first of all, that was Unburden Yourselves. Thank you to everyone who wrote in. It appears as though Harry's still asleep, so can we really quickly talk about yeah, Salt Lake City? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe he's been such a good boy for his mommy. I know. You know, he, he is a king who respects podcasts. I also pumped while I um, did my makeup, so if he were to, like, wake up and be like, I could use a snack, um, he has one. There's a bottle. Okay. Yeah. 
So finally, we were put out of our misery. And I just can't help with comparing this Jen Shaw situation to the Erica Jane situation. And to me, if Erica Jane at the reunion and just the overall season got, you know, grilled at like a level 10, then I think I'm being generous in saying Jen Shaw has been given a level four. I was going to say four, too. It's insane. Even the like we got nothing like I just feel like Andy didn't give a shit. And, you know, she pulled a little bit of the, you know, I can't talk about it. It's legal, which is expected. Erica did that, too. And I do believe Erica was being honest when she said I legally can't talk about like she tried to be as transparent because she really had nothing to hide, I think. Um, But I think Jen has like a lot to hide and her not even being able to answer like the most simplest of questions, which I think had nothing to do with the legal system. I just I've never been more convinced than I am now that Jen might be going to jail, even though one of the women, I forget who it was, maybe it was Whitney or Heather did make an interesting point because we've been saying how Stu took a plea gu- plea deal as and he pled guilty, which obviously like bodes terribly for Jen. But someone offered a different perspective, like, oh, maybe that like clears Jen. She'll he'll shoulder the burden. And like also- and, and it was him. She you know, he didn't know she didn't know that she had this person working for him who was being, you know, illegal. Yes. Well Two, I have two thoughts about that. One, yeah, now her defense could be, it was all Stu. Look at him. He pled guilty. He pled guilty. Other thought is that he probably took a deal and shared information that they will now use against Jen. That's what I was thinking initially, but I hadn't thought of the other spin until I think Whitney or Heather said it. Yeah, it could go either way, and I guess hopefully the truth will prevail. I mean, when I watch, like, from the person's, like, when we watch Erica, now watching Jen, like, I definitely do skew more towards like giving them the benefit of the doubt and like believing what they're saying because I'm just like I try to be like a just a trusting person and Mm -hmm. it seems like all of the women like no one raised their hand that they thought Jen was guilty but again I guess like why would you be friends with someone who you think could do something like this so like no but also if this is your friend you would never believe that they could do something like this therefore like you would assume that they are innocent the the environment of this season hasn't been one that even lends itself to like being open to thinking jen did anything wrong like everyone is just like jen's in this even though the the, you know who the person who thinks jen is the most guilty it's heather Mm -hmm. and i think last night really showcased heather in the worst light possible I think, honestly, she might be the biggest loser to ever grace this show because not only does she she was the only one who was like, I don't care if Jen is guilty or I'm I'm going to be her friend. She brought up a thousand times and Jen was like, stop bringing it up. And honestly, Heather should stop bringing up how nasty and bad Jen treated her and how they're still friends now because it makes Heather look like the biggest loser of all time. Like you're acknowledging this person literally couldn't have given less of a shit about you and now you're gonna throw yourself under the bus for them like Heather I'm sorry Heather is the worst yeah no her saying I don't care whether she did it or not like I support her like that's a really terrible take like you should care whether she did those things that she's accused of or not I mean the fact that I understand that they wait till the end to like deal with this big thing but I felt like with Erica throughout every part it came up a little bit they dealt with it and then they did like the whole meat and potatoes at the end like with Jen I felt like by the time they got to her like everyone was so over it it was probably Mm -hmm. already like eight o'clock at night Andy was over it like there was really the questions like kind of sucked and the only question that I really wish that he would ask her is like you say that you are innocent you know and that you're being like targeted but like how does Homeland Security the FBI and the NYPD like come to the conclusion that we're coming for Jen Shaw like what do you think led them to this and and where did they go wrong like what have they gotten wrong about this right because the difference in Erica and Jen's trials which are so different one because it wasn't erica it was erica's husband and this is jen being accused not coach shaw um but the other big difference is the girardis were being sued by people corporations jen shaw is on trial with the u.s government like they don't make mistakes like if they're coming for you it's over like they already know i don't think there's a lot and maybe i'm wrong i don't think that like the fbi and homeland security you know get people and then they get off scot-free like that's just not really how it works yeah and I mean Andy said like the DA the New York DA gets you know 95 percent and Jen had a really good answer for that she that did. that's because people accept plea deals aka Stewart um but it, yeah that was I agree. a good answer I, I don't think that they like go to all of this trouble on a whim right 
So I just think like, and by the way, her date has been pushed back. It was supposed to be like in two weeks and it's been pushed back again, oh. um, which I don't know if that like provides relief or like treacherousness for Jen. Like I'm sure she wants it over with, but she might be going to jail. So then, you know, she gets more time with her kids. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. It's just crazy to me that, like, Jan- Jen stands accused of, like, these heinous crimes, and yet, like, Lisa Barlow had the worst ex- union experience. Lisa yeah, Barlow was held the most agree. accountable. And, I mean, the the stuff about, like, the Meredith rant, I f- I'm, like, so sad about it because... It, me too. I really like Lisa and Meredith's friendship, and I think that they had a real friendship and, like, beyond the show... And I want Meredith to forgive her, but I could never forgive her. And Meredith never. is even more like, I want to say stubborn or, or she's like so principled. Like Mer- Meredith can't forgive yeah. that. Like, no, I couldn't. And so I, I don't know how they move forward from here because like the things but that see, she said and the way tough. that she said them, it's just unforgivable. I know. But you know what's tough is like, and I'm not making a pass for it but like you know we're all entitled to like our own thoughts and our own privacy and like she wasn't saying it to anyone she didn't sit down on camera like she was caught in like a moment of fury talking to herself um and that's something no one's ever supposed to hear and her and Meredith could have made up and moved on and like she could have just you know harbored those feelings in the moment but the fact that like she was mic'd and we really got this like intimate personal scene that like we really weren't not supposed to see that just sucks because like you know we all we all have people we love but we all think things you know we're entitled to our internal monologue yeah that's actually a good point I hadn't thought of it like that I was kind of thinking of it like the way the other women did which is like this is what you really think this is who you really are I don't know I'm more realistic of human nature like we love people but we have things to say about them I know but so like usually you don't find out what people actually think it's in their brain but it's now private. knowing now knowing what someone thinks of you, like how can you accept them as a close friend? You you can't, and Meredith you can't. can't. Maybe Whitney Heather could. Heather oh, could. Oh yeah, flip flop central. These women are just out of control. And you know what? Whitney and Heather are so atrocious. They've actually made me feel bad for Lisa Barlow, which is not a feeling I ever really thought that I could feel. Yeah, no, like I don't really have a horse in this race, but um, if I did, it's it weird wouldn't be me. Heather or Whitney. It's, it's kind of like Lisa Barlow. I mean, I think Meredith is it's she's still my number one for the most part, but she just um. She's not so involved in, in the day to day. So she's disengaged. Yeah, it's really Lisa for me. And like when Whitney was like talking about how she like found her voice, I was like, lose it, please. I know. I can't. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> no, I can't with these women. They're they're atrocious. It's just it it was so it was it was such a letdown of a season. Disappointing. Um, and especially the reunion. I felt like all season we're like, okay, but at the reunion, the questions will be asked. and Vindication. And the, the feet will be held to the fire. And it was so fucking shitty. Yeah. Three parts of shittiness. Agreed 100%. It was atrocious. And I'm so relieved it's over. Does that mean yeah. what's coming back soon? I mean, New York is like gone. Yeah, New York is gone. Oh. Me- Beverly Did you Hills? see Dumois posted something today? Yes, and um, I need to talk about why it's not the society, but please share what you think they that they post in. Okay, so somebody who obviously gives Dumois tips wrote, huge news about a beloved show with an ensemble cast on a major streamer coming soon. It's coming back. It first aired in 2019, and the announcement is coming in a few. People will be thrilled about this one. Why do you not think it's the society? Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't see that it said it first aired in 2019. I didn't think it was a society because a, be- a show with a beloved cast, that gives me like Frasier vibes. Yeah, no, me too. But it says, she responded, Dumois said, can you give a hint around this time it first aired? The person responded, 2019. Oh my God. I think that's it then. I think that's it too. Major streamer, even though the cast is like not beloved because like they were all relatively unknown, but it's possible. But, like, the show is beloved, so maybe they just got confused. Yeah, so I will literally die. And, by the way, I will 100% take credit for the show coming back. Yeah, no, I think we we could say that we had a big part in that. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but I'm feeling more hopeful than Than when I saw your story initially. I don't know how I missed that. That's okay. Um, You're busy, like, being a child, being a mother. No, yeah, like, everything is just, like, different now. Like, the time that I have, the energy that I give – toward things and like even just the way I consume Instagram stories it's just like tap 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 I mean you were doing that to me before so nothing has really changed for me 
Um, no, I mean, you know, when I, I love when you use captions. Actually, sometimes I do tap, because also, like, I talk to you all day, every day. There's nothing that you say on your Instagram stories that you haven't already said to me on FaceTime. It's so mean. Okay. Well, that is our first show back. Um, Jackie, thank you for taking 90 whole minutes. This has been the no. longest episode. Oh, yeah, 90. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So... We love you. We'll see you again a week from today, but mm-hmm. there will be episodes all of this week with different co-hosts. Make sure you're keeping up on the Toast Instagram for updates. You're with me again next Monday. I think maybe the next Monday after that, but then the week after that, you're on Tuesday. Like you're, We try and keep you in the beginning of the week, but just make sure to keep up on the Toast Instagram every week for the schedule. Yes, exactly. I'm looking forward to seeing more of the schedule, and I'm so excited for your week of um, Toast and Friends. It's going to be so premium. So, so premium. So I'll see you in a week, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe. Oh, wait. The Morning Toast Instagram is back. Yes. It, we like, literally took months, and we, we, we told you guys that we would tell you what happened, but due to unforeseen circumstances, we actually can't tell you. Just be happy that it's back. And thank you so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video a thumbs up. Come on. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So at Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places wherever you listen to podcasts. Find us The Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. The Society Season 2 might be coming back. And now that The Morning Toast Instagram is back, we can officially reinstate The Morning Toast Season 2. So if you have made it to the end of this episode and you want to prove that you're better than all the other toasters because you actually listen to the end, why don't you go drop an Instagram, uh, an emoji on our most recent Instagram post, perhaps a picture of a bebe? Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.